identification of Zulu, non-Zulu becomes better acceptable in a democratic uh, setting because what we really don't want Butelezi to come up with is to start defining a future South Africa in terms of apartheid. What we're trying to get rid of is apartheid. Him as a person and everyone with him who want to participate in the process are all welcome when the time comes. So he belongs to this uh, Freedom Party, and I think maybe that, that's where it's, it's going to be happening. In terms of what's going to happen after the, the Constituent Assembly has been formed, I hope by that time there will be a clear definition of political parties so that we don't have an African National Congress that graduates itself into a political party. And the people in South Africa have needs to have a chance to vote it into uh, power so that it becomes a political party. So nobody here is, is uh, exonerated from the uh, uh, accountability of being a representative politician for the people. A few vision of an ideal South Africa. Hmm, that's a very good question and a very hard one. First of all, it's hard because it borders on projection. Now, that's a very unscientific way of doing things for me <laughs> on a political level, too. Ideally, South Africa should be a vibrant, viable economy. South Africa should be able to utilize its mineral resources and be and take its place in the world as the uh, Persian Gulf of Minerals in the continent and be the gateway to the African continent that it is. And Africa has to get its act together and, and stop uh, all these uh, different currencies and borders at every corner that were created by people who were visiting anyway so that people don't have the inability to travel without a passport from one small location to the next. And when they do travel, they should be able to use the money without losing all of it due to a currency change. As the South Africa being able to utilize its ability to have been an English-speaking country and, 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 and get rid of this Africans that Africans language that we don't need and send it back to where it came from in Europe, Germany or, or, or Holland. Unfortunately, nobody there wants it, nor do they want the people. And that the white South African who calls himself an Africana should earn that title. People don't come to South Africa and start calling themselves Africans all of a sudden, or Africaners. The, you know, the, that thing must stop. You must leave there and end being Africans by living with Africans within the African context of living. I see a vibrant culture that's going to sweep the rest of Africa and the world as it already has done. And a youth that is not as we have been busy with the struggle of fighting for liberation, but a youth that is busy with the struggle of competing equally with their white counterparts and in an amicable, harmonious way live in a, in a, in a country that's just looking at uh, what, what, this, what this country fought for, what they call it, peace, prosperity, and what they, all, all the uh, values that are bordered in the constitution of this country. This time, a constitution that is for real, that doesn't exclude blacks and women like this one did when it was erected. Okay, we have time for one more question. What's our most reliable source of information you know, for us in this part of the country? Um, as, it, as this progresses. Let me see if I did my homework on that. A small person preoccupied me, and I, I wanted to do that. Let me just see quickly if I have that. If I don't, what I'll do is I'll create the bibliography information and submit it here. In, uh, in the absence of that, uh, depending on your area, the first thing to be looking at in terms of the real economic changes there's an Institute for Industrial Research Center in Washington, D.C. They provide information. There is... Uh, SAS post is coming to a close. You can't get that anymore. That was the last issue. 
There are a lot of magazines. I just um, haven't thought of them now. Let me see. Uh, Bafan, let the back. Do you have anything that comes to mind quickly about information resource? There is a newspaper that comes out of South Africa, which is pretty reliable. That's the uh, weekly. You can subscribe to that, and they're very good at sending it once you are a subscriber. You can get information from TransAfrica, or the Africa Fund, or the Washington Office on Africa. That's Can't right, see. that's right. But I, I would comment that the interesting thing is I've read a lot of the South African press, and I find the South African press to be much freer than the press in the United States. I mean, you can get a lot more information about South Africa, and even about world issues that you're not going to find in Washington. Yeah, well, I think your, your country's press is pretty interesting. I don't want to call it names. All I know for sure is that in South Africa, people know a lot about America. In America, people know nothing about what's going on in South Africa, and we all read the same newspapers. There's a program called, the television program called Afri Africa Now, or South Africa Now. It's closed. It used to run on public television in Ames. They shut it down, too. Yeah. Well, they shut it down. It's limited of doing its purpose because there's this euphoria of South Africa being hampered now. So mm -hmm. they said that program is of limited purpose. They shut that down. But uh, Africa uh, Fund and the uh, uh, Trans Africa offices would be the sources to look to. Or the drummer of campus. <laughs> 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 I want to thank our speaker one more time. Thank you. And hope that she returns for the third time. <laughs>